So there's been a news story going around the British media about a car melting in London, which apparently is due to its proximity to a new building which is going up in London. The physics is a thing called geometric optics. And this is about how you deal with understanding how light propagates. And if you really want to do the job properly, then you've got to solve Maxwell's equations and really solve a very complicated set of equations and light's actually quite complicated. But for many purposes, you don't need to do that because essentially the main thing that most people know about light is that it travels in straight lines. So the story is that um, some guy just parked his car on the street, went away for an hour, um, came back and found that most of the plastic parts of his car had melted. Um, and there was actually a note, I think, stuck under the windscreen uh, saying, um, uh, your, your car's melted, please come and see us from the builders of this building who clearly recognised that their building had something to do with the fact that this car had been melted. So it's a new building, it's not even finished yet, it's, it's still going up. And actually there had already been a few stories around about people being dazzled in the streets and so on. So it was already, people were starting to think there's something strange going on with this building. But this was kind of the, the, the really extreme case of all the bad things that this building ended up doing. I have a bit of history in this. I've actually looked at the effects of large reflecting surfaces um, and that the way they concentrate light. And so I started looking into this particular story a little bit more closely. One of the nice things about new buildings going up is of course they have to have planning applications and so you can actually go to the planning website, download all the plans for the building and take a look for yourself. And so I actually downloaded the plans for this thing. Um, so here's, a, here's one of the artist's impressions of what the building's going to look like and the important point about it is that the south facing surface is curved to this building. This particular architect's like making these concave surfaces. So it's actually, it's, it it's, has the uninspiring official name of 20 Fenchurch Street, of course that's its address. It's become widely known amongst Londoners as the Walkie Talkie Building, although they now seem to be changing it to the Walkie Scorchy Building. Uh, but uh, just because it looks a little bit like an old-fashioned walkie-talkie. So the issue is that a concave surface is essentially a, a way of concentrating light. A concave, especially, I mean, I guess the important point is that, that uh, if, the light, if the sunlight that were hitting this surface all just went into the building, that would be fine, because then the, the building would actually have no real effect. Um, but even with, you know, really uh, good quality gla glass, some of the light gets reflected rather than going into through the windows. And actually as the light gets more and more oblique, as the angle that the light hits the glass gets more and more oblique, typically more and more of the light gets reflected. So if the light's coming in at a, a, a fairly uh, shallow angle to the glass, it's much more likely to get reflected if the light's face on, it tends to go straight through. And so as soon as you have light not face on to the glass, you're gonna have a, a large amount of it reflected. And because this surface is curved, that's actually going to then focus the light just as a concave mirror would. So I had a little bit of a play around because I knew from the news story what time this guy had parked his car. And so you can then look up in these things called ephemeris where the sun was in the sky at that particular time. So I could figure out where the sun was. It was pretty much due south. So it was illuminating this particular surface pretty much face on, but also what angle it was at. So you can figure out how high in the sky it was. And then you can do this thing called ray tracing of essentially figuring out where the different bits of sunlight will go just using these simple laws of geometric optics of the light traveling in a straight line unless it hits a surface and then the important law you have to use here is the law of reflection which just basically says that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection in other words if the light comes in at a particular angle it goes off at the same angle so i just downloaded this started figuring out where the light went just doing it with a pencil and a protractor, one of these things for measuring angles. And actually the hardest part of this was finding a protractor because no one has one anymore. Uh, but I did actually manage to borrow one. Oh, you got one. Okay, you yeah, so I actually, I actually went around all the students saying, can I borrow a protractor? Uh, the general response I got was, what's a protractor? Which is a bit worrying. But actually, uh, it turned out one of them had this rather fancy looking protractor stuck on the end of a ruler in his desk. So here's what's going on at that particular time of day. So here's the sunlight coming in and the sun's a long way away, which essentially means the rays are all parallel. Of course, the rays are, are sort of diverging from the sun in different directions, but the sun's sufficiently far away that to all intents and purposes, they're parallel here. And you can see they strike different bits of the building and then you can figure out the angle that they strike that particular bit of glass at and hence where any reflected light's gonna go because this angle in has to be equal to that angle out. And because the building is curved, the angles get dif are different at different points in the building and that's what causes this concentration effect. That uh, each one individually is just getting reflected back the same way it came pretty much or the sort of complementary angle to the way it came. But those angles are all different because the angle of the surface they're hitting is all different. And so as you can see the net effect is that all this well spread out sunlight coming in ends up concentrated in a rather small area. And I did some very, very crude calculations to try and figure out how much it's concentrated by. I reckon it's probably about a factor of 10 to 20. So the, the intensity of light on that particular little bit of road 
was about 10 to 20 times what the usual intensity of sunlight is. And it turns out for the plastic parts of car, that's enough to melt them. This can be a useful property of curved. Oh, it's, you know, it's in, in astronomy, we use it all the time. It's how you could focus the light in a telescope. And in fact, the reason why I got involved in doing these kind of calculations in the first place is because the people who wanted to figure out what these effects were going to be thinking, well, who is it who knows what the properties of large reflecting concave surfaces are? And it's actually what astronomers do all the time. We use this to actually collect large amounts of light and focus them down to small regions. When you're looking at a distant galaxy, that's a good thing to do because you really want to collect as much light as you possibly can. And even when you've collected all that light, it's still very faint. When you're talking about the sun, you've got to be a lot more careful because there's a lot of light to start with. So when you start concentrating it down, you really get huge amounts of power. Tell us about your form here in Nottingham. <laughs> so I, I, I am this, the dubious privilege of having created an urban myth here in Nottingham. And the urban myth I created is in the middle of Nottingham, there's a thing called the Sky Mirror, uh, which is a beautiful piece of art. It's a concave mirror put there by an artist called Anish Kapoor, who makes these kind of installations quite a lot. It's about six meters in diameter. It's a large concave mirror, and it basically reflects the sky. So when you walk into this square outside the playhouse in the middle of Nottingham, you see this amazing mirror basically reflecting the, the skyline and the sky above you, and you get these nice inverted images. It's one of the properties of a concave mirror as the images come out upside down. Obviously, there are these health issues associated with large concave mirrors, potentially in direct sunlight. Um, so I was called into this project to say, well, you know, what are the issues? And I went through a lot, you know, what we've just been talking about, about the dangers of collecting large amounts of sunlight and what have you. Even with a, this relatively modest mirror, something six metres across, you're still talking about many, many kilowatts of power potentially being concentrated into a very small region. So you've really got to be very careful about it. It turns out in this particular case that they've been quite clever about sighting it, so it's not a huge issue. So unlike this skyscraper where it's a south face that's you know, really facing the sun, this mirror is designed to face north. Um, which really means you very rarely get, get direct sunlight on it. But there are a few weeks of the year in the middle of summer when the sun creeps around far enough that you do have to worry about it. And so I warned them about all these issues and they actually then decided that they were going to put in some mitigation which was to put some sunshades up on the top of the theatre um, as a way of you know, preventing the sunlight getting onto the front face of the mirror. Now to do that they needed to put in a planning application and so they duly put it in the planning application. One of the things that the people on the local newspaper here in Nottingham do is they go through all the planning applications to see if there's anything interesting. They found this one for sunshades, they got in touch with the architects, the architect said oh we'll talk to this astronomer he'll tell you about it. And it was a Friday afternoon and I was you know fairly laid back with my feet up on the desk talking to this reporter and just in passing I said you've got to be very careful about these things because if you weren't then a passing pigeon could end up being barbecued as it flew through the beam. And clearly it was a slow news day in Nottingham, so this ended up being the banner headline on the front page of the newspaper about barbecued pigeons. And there are the guys on the wire service, nationally, who go through all the local newspapers looking for entertaining stories, and they picked up on this one. And so they put it out on the wire service nationally and internationally, and clearly it was a slow news day nationally and internationally. And I ended up being interviewed on the BBC, and a, the story appeared in Australian newspapers, and it was all over the place. Um, and the poor playhouse, who'd actually paid for this wonderful piece of art to be put out, started getting all this abuse about the way they were mistreating pigeons. And so they ended up having to produce leaflets that said, you know, no pigeons were harmed in the production of this piece of art. And actually the, the chef in the playhouse, because there's a restaurant in the playhouse, has clearly had a sense of humour because he put barbecued pigeon on the menu. But even now, what, 10 years after this, I still once in a while people, hear people talking about this mirror of barbecuing pigeons. So I really have created my very own urban myth.